Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a chance to, to grab a, a lovely, healthy bite to eat for lunch and enjoy, if you're in the Lower Mainland, beautiful, sunshiny day. Uh, and if you're elsewhere, beautiful day wherever you are. Um, my name is Anand Kanna. I am the manager of Motion Picture Programs and Services here at AtSafe. And I would like to welcome you to Human Factors in Safety, sponsored by UBCP Actra. Thank you, UBCP Actra, for sponsoring a good number of our sessions and the conference in general this year. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional Indigenous lands that we all live and gather on today. Although we're uh, gathered here virtually at this conference this year again, uh, we all live and work on unique and individual uh, Indigenous territories. Um, I would like, I would ask you to, um, to learn a little bit more about the territory that you live on. And an easy way of doing this is by visiting the Native Land Digital website. Um, and you can search on the search for the territory that you are located. Uh, the website, if you um, haven't heard it already, is www.native-land.ca. So on to our session at uh, one o'clock. Your presenter this afternoon is a Canadian certified professional ergonomist the president of the Association of Canadian Ergonomists, the BC Yukon region. He's a board director at the Work Wellness Institute and as well, he holds postgraduate degrees in physiotherapy, ergonomics, education and business administration. Uh, needless to say, he's, uh, he's well learned and doesn't uh, give me an inferiority complex whatsoever. So you might remember this fellow as uh, from his previous starring role as the CEO of ActSafe. And it is my pleasure to welcome Manu Nalutla back to the ActSafe stage. One thing before we move on, well, there will be a Q&A section uh, after Manu's presentation. Uh, so if you, uh, if you have any questions, you can hold it until then. Um, also in the top right corner of your screen next to the chat, participant and closed captioning buttons, that's where the button is to, to hit the, um, the Q&A side of things. I'll keep an eye on the questions throughout and we'll pass them off to Manu as, as needed at appropriate timing. If you see a question you like on that list as well, you can upvote it and it'll move it up to the top of the list. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Manu. Manu, come on up on stage. Hey, Anand, thank you. And uh, thanks for that introduction. And it's always nice to be back at ActSafe and, and uh, glad to see so many of you joining ActSafe conference this year. Uh, so. Thanks to uh, all the participants joining. Well, uh, talking about the session here, let me uh, start by sharing my screen. And Anand, if you can give me a heads up to see if you can see my screen in here. Yep. Perfect. So human human factors in safety. So uh, we're going to have the next one hour talking about what is, uh, why are we talking about human factors? And, and the reason for that is mostly because of human errors. And, and we'll talk about uh, in the next session, one hour, what are human errors, why they happen, and what are the reasons or factors that uh, lead to human, fa human errors, and uh, how can we actually um, uh, modulate the risk uh, happen occurring because of human factors, especially in safety critical uh, situations. So uh, let's, let's go ahead. And uh, I'll be uh, uh, looking at the QA, Q&A and chat I'll try my best to uh, answer them as we go, but we, I'll try to uh, get some uh, time at the end too. So before we start, uh, if you, if Anand, you can help me out or Aiden, I need a volunteer who can actually do this next activity. Can we get somebody who want to volunteer? Anybody, 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 anybody? I'm going down the chat the and, list then... <laughs> and I'm going to start picking somebody if, if nobody sacrifices themselves soon. Your hand there, raise your hand. Oh, some, there's one. Here we go. You're going to see an indication on your screen and just accept that uh, invite and you'll be able to join Manu here on stage. Hey, Camille. There we go. So, Camille, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Hi, Camille. Thanks for volunteering. So let's let's look at this activity yeah. and see what, what I wanted you to do. Yes. Okay. Look at the words below. That will come up. Okay? okay. And as soon as they come up, I want you to quickly say the color of the word, not the mm -hmm. word itself. Okay. Here you go. Sure. Red. Gray. Blue. Black. Green. <laughs> so how many were right in that? You forgot the blue as black. This was a black. You said blue. Black? Oh, did I? 
<laughs> anyway, and, and, so, so the, the funny thing about this is that when we try to put somebody on 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 stage or on focus, there are lots of chances for you to uh, to for an error, right? So thanks thanks for participating in that. I just wanted to kick off this uh, presentation by with an activity. Thanks, Camille. Thanks. So. So what happens is that to err is human, you know, uh, that's the downside of having a brain. Uh, but the, the biggest challenge with this is that uh, this error could be costly if it leads to an accident. So we all err, uh, like for example, uh, uh, when Camille was talking about those colors, sometimes you get confused when you're put on spot and told you to do that. I, the instructions was, were clear that look quickly say the color of the word, not the word itself, but even though the instructions were clear, because of the, the the pressure to perform and and to and to make it proper, uh, there are there could be uh, chances of error. So to error is humor, uh, to error is human, uh, but this error, as I mentioned, could be costly if it leads to an accident. And what is an accident? Accident uh, is an unfortunate incident that happens uh, unexpectedly and unintentionally, typically resulting in a damage or injury. So it's anything that is unexpected. Unintentional, remember that accidents are not uh, uh, intended to happen. It's normally unintentional and they happen uh, unexpectedly. But why have, we have seen that whenever, uh, wherever there is that unexpected or unintentional event happens, it's mostly due to error, error from, uh, from a human side of the thing. So whenever there is a human involved, uh, there is an, and there is an error, it is always a perfect recipe for accident. Research has found out that human error is a causal factor in 80 to 90% of all accidents and they all are, is a present as a contributing factor in 50 to 60% of all accidents. So if you look at all the accidents here, procedural problem, who writes procedural problems? Humans. Personal or human error itself is a cause of accidents. Equipment or material problem, goes around 20% of the, of the problems, whereas training deficiency, again, a human error, human factors problem. Management oversight, again, there's a human involved. So human error is a causal factor of 80 to 90% uh, of all the accidents. And that's why it's important for us to understand why human errors occur. And, and because they're contributing factor to almost 50 to 60% of all accidents, it's very important for us to understand how to mitigate them or how to reduce the, the risk from these, uh, uh, from these human errors. So what is a human error? A human error can be a failure itself. So a failure is someone so when somebody has to take a decision. Should I, should, I, uh, should I say yes or no? Or it could be skill-based. Right. If I'm not skilled enough, then there could be I, I may be more prone for errors, and hence if I, I can cause a lot of failures. So, is somebody properly trained? Uh, so, a human error could be because of skill-based failure, or it could be because of decision failure. A human error can also be a cause of failure itself. For example, provide failure to provide guidance or taking no responsibility. So, it, that could be a cause of failure. For example, management saying that, you know what, hey, we give you this uh, book, uh, orientation book, you need to uh, read through that without properly giving guidance. That may cause for that person to, uh, to, to be prone for a human error, which will lead to a failure. So human error could be either failure itself or it could be a cause of failure. Human error could be a process towards failure. For example, it's an un in unintentional or departure from routine. You always take highway uh, one, and today you took uh, low heat highway, for example, another highway here in lower middle BC. And, and what happens? There is traffic jam there. And you're like, oh, why did I take that? So it's unintentional. You, you, some, you somehow depart from the routine, and that can also cause human errors. So it's very important to identify that. You cannot just say that, hey, it's because of human error. Because a human error, as you know, as I presented here, could be a failure by itself, could be a cause of the failure, or it could be a process towards failure. So it's very important to understand what caused that human error itself. So whenever there is human, and whenever there is an error, human error happens, we think about human factors. So I just wanted to say, what are the human factors? A big scientific discipline, uh, uh, what is a definition from International Ergonomic Association is ergonomics or human factors is a scientific discipline considered with, considered with the understanding of interactions among humans and other elements of a system. 
and the profession that applies theory, principles, data, and methods to design in order to optimize, that's the word I want to highlight here, optimize human well-being and overall system performance. So that's what human factors looks into. How can we improve the system performance? How can we optimize the human performance or OPE or, or human organizational performance or HOP, uh, they are commonly known as. In a simple terms, human factors looks at how people interact with other systems. Other systems include workplaces, management. So how a, how a person or a worker interacts with uh, a workplace. So for example, there are workplace factors like uh, uh, what is the site design like? Uh, and uh, what is the uh, what is the equipment design like the equipment that he is working with? For example, if if he has to work with a with a camera that's very heavy, uh, then uh, you know uh, that's the equipment design fault, not the not the fault of the person who is using it. So sometimes it may be difficult for them to use it. So that may prone to error. Or the buttons on the camera, which are very tiny, instead of one button, you may press record when it's not to be recorded. So again, there are uh, design factors that may contribute to that uh, interaction or it could be management sometimes the job design itself long hours can uh, can create fatigue and cause people to err or or it could be communication uh, if if the communication is uh, is uh, received by let's say a person who ha whose first language isn't english or 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 uh, who struggles with english but the whole communication is in english then he may interpret the communication or the information in a different way and he and hence uh, they could be prone for errors so human factors looks into how people interact with different uh, uh, systems around them including workplaces and management and also about their own individual factors what is the competition of an individual. If you're not skilled enough or competent enough, then you may, uh, you are prone for errors. For example, uh, driving a car, uh, there is reason why we have a license, uh, learner license first, NOVs, and then and then the full license because you need to get to that competency level. Otherwise, uh, research has shown that shown that you are prone for errors, or it could be age. As you age, uh, you, you get tired quickly, your decision-making systems uh, 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 you know, uh, become slower, so they are more prone for errors too. So human factors looks into all these areas and see how we can minimize uh, the, 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 the errors. So human factors is a body of knowledge about human abilities, so it's not it's also the not the limitations but also human abilities, human limitations and other human characteristics that are relevant to design. But human factors in safety, especially, is concerned with all those factors that influence people and their behavior in safety critical situations. Let's take an ex example of uh, how it happens. Human beings make silly mistakes regardless of their experience, knowledge, and vigilance. I want you to uh, show me a thumbs up here in your reactions uh, on the chat here on the side and tell me how many of you have done this? Eating eating a burger uh, while driving or drink, uh, taking a sip from a drink or... or uh, or even uh, uh, you know uh, taking a phone, uh, right? Uh, calling somebody uh, over a phone. So we, we we do those kind of silly mistakes, even though we are we are known not to be doing those things. We take those uh, sudden uh, what do you say? You're thirsty and you're driving, and instead of stopping on the side of the of the road, you just go for that water bottle and pick it up and drink because that's what you 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 do. So we do those silly mistakes, and sometimes those silly mistakes can cause. Uh, panic and errors and 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 failures. Uh, I hope you all remember this uh, incident uh, uh, when an SMS was sent, uh, uh, an emergency alert was sent in Hawaii, uh, almost uh, four years back uh, to this date, I think, uh, where uh, a person has by mistake pressed a wrong button, which instead of it being a drill and the message was sent was supposed to be sent internally was sent to the whole uh, island uh, inhabit uh, like uh, people who are living on the island and everybody got this uh, message that uh, there was a ballistic missile threat inbound to hawaii seek immediate shelter imagine the panic it would have created but uh, then they realized they sent another message saying that oh sorry this, that was due to a human error so it's very easy to point out at human error, but we need to understand why that human error must have occurred and, and how to mitigate them. So we do silly mistakes and these things do happen. So I want to uh, like, like we do, uh, how many of you uh, try to go that, uh, uh, you know, two or five kilometers above the speed limit when it's, when it's mentioned? 
right? It says 110. Why don't we state 110? Because we say that, oh, every, everyone else is going at 115. So maybe I can try to go uh, five kilometers ab uh, above the speed limit. And what happens? Those silly mistakes may lead to human error, as simple as that. How many of us try to get into that HOV lane suddenly to swirl around and, and, and get back into the into the lanes? Those mi that minor um, uh, sudden uh, silly mistakes can lead to uh, human errors and, and human failures. So I want you to uh, uh, put me in the chat, type for me in the chat here. If I tell you to follow these particular steps, tell me what happens. I know, I hope you all love drinking coffee. So here is your instructions and they say, choose a size, choose a beverage and click start. Tell me what do you get? I I'm, I'm looking at the chat here and I hope you can type in there. What would what, what be the result of those steps? A coffee? Yeah, of course, Anand, that's for the coffee, yes. Anyone else? Short coffee? Yes, short coffee, because yes, choose a size, yes. Nicole, you get the first, uh, you get the prize. Your beverage falls on the floor because there is no cup. You're absolutely right. But how many of us have thought about that? We just assume that these instructions that are put on, on, on our communication boards or wherever, wherever, we assume that from our point of view, the communication is out there. You, do the, you, do, you follow those steps and you'll get a short coffee, right? Or short cup of coffee. So what would be the ideal way then? Well, start with place a cup on the serving platform, choose the size, select which beverage you want beverage you want and then press start and that's when the coffee would you will have a cup of coffee otherwise it will be coffee on the floor so as simple as this we we find these kind of examples everywhere where we say that you know the communication is clear uh, we feel that the communication is clear but still people make errors and we don't understand why but when you take a deep dive into that you will understand why that sometimes we miss those one or two steps without, uh, because we don't think about who the end user could be. Imagine somebody, uh, I, can, I moved from Rwanda to Canada eight years, uh, nine years back now. Imagine if somebody, uh, I, I came to this, that, that's the first time I'm using a coffee uh, machine. <laughs> I would exactly do follow the first image here, choose the size and do, and, and the coffee would be on the floor because I nobody told me that I have to actually place a cup on the serving platform. So we think from our end, it's all clear, but we need to think about not from our side of communication, but we need to think who are the end users? Who are those human uh, or workers who are actually going to use this communication? How are they going to understand? And that's what human factors looks into. Now look at this example, a wonderful. Uh, the first one was more on the communication, right? How the communication was. Uh, this one uh, relies heavily on, on, uh, on design. Which one should I press? Well, I would press both of them. So is it the right one here uh, that will, if I press this, will take me down if this lights up or if this lights up, it will take me up. These kind of design uh, uh, elements come across, we come across uh, a lot in our in our daily life and we make some, those silly mistakes and we, we make those errors, but luckily they are not uh, related to a safety critical situation and that's why we are still safe. But imagine these kind of silly mistakes happening in a safety critical situations like this one, center, left, right. I mean, somebody must have told him, you know what, let's 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 uh, put, uh, let's have three switches, one for center, left and right. And they just followed the the the, the orders there, you know, for one is for the center, left and right, but no, not noticing that center should actually be in the center. So that, these are again, communication and design faults that can lead to human errors. And the classic one always, pull versus push of a door. No matter the sign is there, at least in our lifetime, and most of us must have struggled whether to push or to pull. And, and that's very common because our intent is uh, based on our previous experiences. And, and sometimes we don't see the communication even if it's in front of that and, and leads to uh, human errors. So human factors acknowledge that universal, uh, it's, a, it's a human uh, universal nature of human fallibility. We will inevitably uh, lead, go towards the side of erring, uh, error, or we, we will uh, be having errors. But what human factors looks also is that assume that errors will occur and we look in designing things in the workplace to try to minimize the likelihood of error and its consequences. And that's what we need to look at that. For example, let's take example of the recent uh, shooting uh, incident or, or uh, uh, unfortunate incident at the, at the movie uh, Rust. 
a movie set, for example. There were all protocols done, but the first instance of the human error we spoke about is that the actor shot, the, uh, you know, he did uh, the, the 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 gun. But we never looked into the what caused uh, that human error to occur, and that's what human factors looks into. What are all the processes? There must have already been a lot of processes, but there were still chances of those failures because of various holes or gaps in that systems or design or communication process that they had that still led to the uh, shooting incident uh, in in the in the in the on the set of rust uh, or take the example of deadpool 2 when there was an incident uh, uh, fatal, fatal fatal incident too there were processes in place for everything but small minor errors uh, from humans due to design or communication or process or design of the of the scene etc led to uh, human uh, uh, errors and then uh, fatalities uh, also happen because of that so that's why it's very important to understand that acknowledge that human errors will happen but making sure that assuming that human errors will happen we need to design things in the workplace to minimize those likelihood of error on its first place so always remember faulty design plus human factors or errors are perfect uh, recipe for accident Here's a video I want you to uh, watch just briefly. It's a, it's a four minute video. Uh, it's an example of uh, an incident that happened at Air France 447. I would like you to watch and then uh, I'll pause in between and ask some questions for you to type in to see how how uh, how you're understanding that incident. Uh, and Anand, before I, as I start, please let me know in, in the chat if you're able to uh, hear the uh, audio, please. For more than two years, a few pieces of debris floating in the Atlantic Ocean were all that was left of Air France Flight 447, and the answer to what happened seemingly lost forever on the ocean floor. But in May of 2011, state-of-the-art submarines made a remarkable dive more than two miles below the ocean's surface and collected the crucial black box. Expert analysis of the reported cockpit The transcripts point to a perfect storm of problems, including stormy weather, aircraft malfunction, and pilot error. But some say there was another contributing factor, the very design of the Airbus cockpit. So that's an interesting factor there. The first investigation always says that, hey, human error, pilot error, pilot error caused this Air France 447 to crash. That's where most of the incidents are uh, investigations uh, point out it too. But what is important to understand is that what caused those human error? And that's an that's interesting factor of this video. Would Air France 447 have had the same disaster if this cockpit were a Boeing instead of an Airbus? I think it would have been much less likely to happen in a Boeing because the, the control wheels are large, they're obvious, I think it could hardly have been missed. When's the last time you were on one of these? To help us break down and understand what happened on board Air France Flight 447, oh, really? CBS News aviation and safety Modern expert Airbus. Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger took us into an outside. Airbus simulator. This is going from neutral to full uh, nose up command, full aft side stick. That's it, right there, that one little movement. That small movement on the Airbus flight controls or side stick raises the nose of the plane and instructs it to climb. Pilots rarely perform the maneuver at high altitudes because it can be very dangerous. But that is exactly what one Flight 447 pilot did. Around 2.05 a.m., when the Airbus A330 was flying through a storm system, all three of its speed indicators stopped working. As a result, the aircraft's autopilot turned off. With a captain on break, the two co-pilots were forced to fly the plane manually. The least experienced pilot, 32-year-old Pierre Bonin, was in the right seat and said, I have the controls. Co-pilot David Robert was in the left seat, and even though considerably more experienced, he let Bonin fly. Theoretically, it was possible to still fly the airplane under those conditions. Challenging, but manageable. Yes. Although they lost the autopilot and speed indicators, they were flying normally and safely. But then suddenly, and without Robert knowing, Bonin does something almost inexplicable. He pulls back on his side stick and raises the nose of the plane. That causes the aircraft to fall and the stall warning sounds. That's, That's the alarm. alarm. Stall alarm. alarm. Over the next four and a half minutes, the stall warning will sound 75 times. But strangely, neither pilot will mention it. 
And unbeknownst to Robert, Bonin will keep the nose of the plane up almost the entire time, exactly what he shouldn't do, a decision that experts still can't understand. It's difficult to explain that. I just don't know why he did that. And there's nothing to you that makes sense on, on, on any experience or intellectual level about pulling back when you should push forward? No. Nothing at all? No. Because of Bonin's actions, the plane is attempting to climb, but is actually losing altitude. Robert appears to have no idea the nose is being lifted when he says, what the hell is happening? I don't understand what's happening. If he had known what Bonin was doing, Robert could have conceivably solved the problem very easily at this point. So you're sitting where Bonin was sitting, and he starts pulling back. Right. Sullenberger yes. showed us why he yes. thinks in this situation, the design of the airplane helped keep Robert in the dark. And it's a subtle movement compared to more traditional airplanes. And unless I happen to notice you visually doing it, I would have no way of telling Robert right. because, that it happened. Because your side stick is not linked to mine. When I move this one, that one never budgets. By traditional airplanes, Sullenberger means those built by Boeing. There so that's an interesting uh, uh, design perspective there that uh, Airbus had at that point is that when the, joy, the stick uh, is moving on one side, it doesn't move on the other side. And, and so that's why the, the co-pilot didn't know that the, the flight was going up because of the, the inexperienced pilot, uh, inexperienced co-pilot's uh, movement of the hand. So that's, that's, an, that's uh, we'll come back to that uh, as we go. For only this. two major airliner manufacturers in the world, Boeing and Airbus, and the two have different cockpit designs and philosophies. The main difference, Airbus uses side stick technology, Boeing uses a yoke. In this airplane, you have a big control wheel. It's right in front of both pilots. We sat down in a Boeing 747 linked. simulator to see the difference. They're mechanically linked. They're not independent. So if, if I move mine, yours moves in unison. Had he been pulling back in a Boeing, how, how would it have looked? Like this. And on my side, it's in my lap. Yes. Robert would clearly have known what was happening if this was happening in a Boeing. I think it would be obvious, yeah. Airbus didn't respond to our request for comment. However, they have never wavered in their public support of their cockpit design. At 2.10 a.m., five minutes after the autopilot disengaged, the Airbus A330 continues to lose significant altitude as the captain re-enters the cockpit and says, what the hell are you doing? Bonin, the least experienced pilot, continues to hold back on his side stick, but still doesn't seem to understand what's happening. We've lost control of the airplane, Bonin says. Robert tells the captain, we've totally lost control of the plane. We don't understand at all. Almost a minute later, as the plane is now just 10,000 feet above the surface of the ocean, Bonin finally reveals the crucial information they've needed. He shouts, I've had the stick back. Robert seems to instantly realize what's going on. He jumps in and says, give me the controls, give me the controls. But it's too late. About 40 seconds later, the two co-pilots say what will be their last words, Robert. Damn it, we're going to crash. This can't be happening. Bonin, but what's happening? Four seconds after that, the voice recorder cuts out. It's so so I, I have a question for you over here. Like, like what all do you think went wrong in, in this scenario? You can put your, your answers in the chat. What what all did uh, do you think that went wrong in this? Let's see what all you can come up with. What led to those human errors? I'll wait for your answers in the chat here. One thing that's obvious was that the, the, the uh, design of uh, the, the stick was definitely uh, a, a big issue. Communication, yes, everybody's doing communication. Inexperience, that's a good one, Emma, inexperience too. Because uh, one, the, the, pilot, the, the pilot who, the co-pilot who was sitting actually on the right side was inexperienced compared to the other pilots. What else? Interesting, good, good list of things there. Lack of communication, design we talked about, inexperience. What else? Not knowing the system, very good. Orientation, training, skill skill based. The, the co-pilot was not familiar with the, with the design, yes. Anything else that comes to mind? I'll give it one more, 30 more seconds to see what all responses we can get. 
lack of shade indicators yes design again design fault let's give it a few more seconds to see if anyone else can come with another top another idea because there are a few <laughs> wonderful okay so one of the other things that uh, yes uh, design fault uh, time aid communication yes so if you, if you if you take note of those the, this example you will know you will say that human errors in this particular activity uh, happen because of communication lack of communication lack of uh, design proper design of it and and orientation training experience and more importantly if you notice in that the main pilot who was taking rest he comes and asks what happened and then they they keep explaining what's happening and even after a minute he didn't take responsibility and he could have just said hey move aside guys let me take this uh, take this over because that's also his responsibility too so it's 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 not only just the design communication training but also taking responsibility whose responsibility it was the super in this case let's say the supervisor's responsibility because he was the main pilot and and the co-pilot who was more experienced should have already taken up taken uh, the responsibility as soon as the stall indicator started coming up so responsibility is another one too so so this is a great uh, is not a great example i would say but a good a, a, an example of how human errors led to disasters uh, i i would uh, say uh, look into other canadian disasters if you are interested like lake magantic train uh, train disaster that happened or or uh, even even what eric stewart was talking today about uh, astro world events uh, accidents or any any uh, anything like uh, Canuck, the canucks game uh, in vancouver uh, the 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 what processes led to that kind of an event uh, accidents etc and and uh, um, space shuttle accidents etc there are so many uh, factors that you can look into these examples and you will see the very common factors and their communication uh, or taking not taking responsibility uh, the process the design the the lack of experience training etc so that's why human factors looks into all these accidents and 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 investigates them and, and they've come up with these kind of risk modulators that that uh, we think that should be introduced to to minimize uh, those uh, accidents so whenever there is an accident investigation people always uh, find out uh, that here yeah, human error is the cause whereas human factors looks into that and say okay how long they have been working for what was the experience uh, were they properly educated or trained or and not only trained or educated but were they reinforced with training later on too well, uh, sometimes I I, I I i look at the system for example driving accidents why do we have so many driving accidents now when everybody is licensed one of the things i i, I think of is that you know there is never a re-examination you get your license until unless you get tickets and your the license is taken uh, renounced uh, you still can have license till you you die uh, right so there is no reinforcement or re-examination to check whether you are still able to drive it uh, whether you are able to park it properly according to the rules yeah, even as you age so reinforcement is another uh, important human factor fatigue uh, is another important uh, for, uh, situation when you're fatigued uh, errors creep in uh, very easily both from a physiological point of view physical point of view and also from a psychological point of view uh, pre-shift situation like how uh, what was this uh, pre-shift situation like for example there were three pilots on this example and and the main pilot took rest when the flight was on why why were, why was he taking rest they, sh they should have already the pilot should have already taken rest a given rest and he should have taken it and then come fresh to this uh, to this uh, uh, what is a flight schedule right so what was the pre shift uh, situation what is the emotional situation like when well, like sometimes when when how do you how do you work uh, when you have uh, what to say a deadline or, or or let's say uh, you had a fight with somebody at your at your at your uh, home and you're working at the same time your emotional situation doesn't allow, allow you to concentrate on the work and you may lead to errors too so emotional situation interaction with supervisor and colleagues how are your supervisors and colleagues are they are they bossy or are they cooperative are they competitive because sometimes to be uh, competitive uh, in the in the competitive spirit sometimes you 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 also try to get the things done quickly or sooner and 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 are, and are prone for errors too so human factors takes into all these kind of uh, uh, areas or or and and says that we and assist in diagnosing failures and identifying appropriate response not only that it also helps in anticipating how the system will respond so as you're planning for a for a, for an event or as you're planning for a set 
uh, for for to, for a for a movie shoot or etc. You can always plan based on the human factors, and you can anticipate how the system will respond if one of that uh, uh, systems fails. For example, when they when they had three pilots, what could they have planned? Well, even though they have three pilots, there could be a time when an inexperienced uh, pilot is with a co-pilot, whereas the main pilot is taking rest. They should have just anticipated that should not happen. The main pilot should always be there. Uh, if he's, if it was the inexperienced pilot, then it should always be the main pilot, or maybe the main pilot and the co-pilot, but not the co-pilot and the inexperienced pilot together. So human factors, looks at how systems may fail and how to introduce uh, uh, design or communication systems so that we can prevent these kind of failure. So let's take a scenario, for example. Imagine there's a fire at your, at your uh, work, I hope it should not happen, but let's say there is a fire in your building and, and you hear a fire alarm. What do you guys do? You run into the, into the, into the room and you know that, hey, these are the uh, exit exit uh, uh, spots and and sometimes you also know where is the muster point and sometimes you may not even know where is the muster point but let's hope that you also know muster point and even in these scenarios though everybody has been oriented about that emergency planning has been done uh, reviews have been done annual drills have been done there is always there are always we hear about news is that uh, somebody was left out or somebody died in a fire accident etc why do that happen because there is always that one person who may be having a lot of other factors that are influencing him or her at that particular point that led to him staying um, staying in that building still. And, and some of them could be, maybe he's busy working. He didn't concentrate. Maybe he was wearing headphones. He was not even listening to, to the fire alarm go. Maybe he was having personal factors. He was like, you know what? Fire is here. I'm done for today. This is my life. You never know how what emotional turmoil they were going through. Uh, maybe the floor design wasn't uh, uh, proper. Maybe it was slippery. So even if he, uh, the person tried to run away, maybe he slipped. Maybe there was a new equipment on the floor which was blocking the the, the exit. So people people will always uh, you know there could be a lot of uh, challenges, lack of supervision. Maybe the supervisor didn't announce and say making sure that everybody's out, uh, or there was no orientation probably, and and hence. Uh, he, that person may still be left out. And, and that's a good one, Krista. Like, for example, some people assume other people will rescue them. Exactly. No. As soon as you hear the alarm, first thing is dash out of that room, right? So there are so many factors that can lead to these kind of uh, situations. So human factors tells you that, imagine that there could be a slip in or a gap in any of these systems and identify them beforehand and try to tighten them up. So there are some risk modulators which I would highlight to for you to take um, take a note of these things whenever you are planning for a movie shoot, uh, location, uh, stunt safety, anything. Take of the take these risk uh, modulators. These are called risk modulators, which will minimize hope and and hoping that human errors will be uh, the effect of the human errors will be to a minimal because human errors, as I said, are inevitable. So design is the most important thing. Design could be work design. This design could be process design, procedural design that, hey, the bike comes from this end to that end, the cameraman is standing at this end, the stunt uh, person is, is wearing a helmet. So look at all the designs and say, what could go wrong in those areas? Maybe the on that particular day, it may rain, or maybe it rained the previous day, and because of cooler temperature, the, the road was much more uh, uh, frosty. So look at all those design elements when you plan your your stunt for example or your your uh, location shot shoot and and then look at what other human uh, other factors may contribute towards human error communication did you provide the communication uh, on time did you provide the communication uh, very clearly explaining what are the steps to take did you also communicate what to do if they don't understand so communication uh, is another risk modulator. The better that your communication, the better the process of your communication, the better uh, explanation in your communication, the better uh, chances of minimizing human errors. The next risk modulator is training. 
if make sure that everybody is trained properly for that particular uh, shot to be taken for uh, most of the time yes of course stunt coordinators are trained properly to take uh, to to plan and and uh, and the stunt uh, guys are also very much uh, trained to to take those uh, uh, to conduct those stunts but making sure that they are properly trained beforehand but are they oriented towards this particular uh, location make sure that the orientation is given and not only orientation reinforcement so that's what i call recall or memory so make sure that you ask them hey can you please uh, tell me what all did you understand in in this in this particular scenario let them explain you may have given emergency uh, preparedness uh, when fun fire drill happens you all go out this is a master point etc great Maybe after two months, check with everybody. Can you please recite that to back to me so that I understand whether you understood all the steps or not? So making sure that you also look at the recall or uh, or uh, reinforcing that particular uh, orientation is also very important risk modulator. And of course, early identification and assessment. And that's what human factors looks into. Human factor says that there are errors that will always happen. So make sure that you also look at how you can uh, identify them early on. Like for example, that incident at Air France, what are some of the uh, early identification that they could have done? Well, they could have planned properly the design of the things, right? Not to say Airbus was wrong or uh, Boeing was wrong. Well, Boeing had its own issues with 737 MAX 8 uh, with its indicators and et cetera. Uh, but, design looking at the design if the design is that way there should be processes introduced because if you cannot change engineering controls which is the design then the next one is administrative controls so what administrative controls they could have kept in the in the in the design concept of that well if uh, the, if the one person is uh, moving uh, their hand making sure that you know uh, maybe an indicator comes up or or maybe as i mentioned previously the, the main pilot should be there with the co-pilot or the inexperienced pilot the main pilot could not should not leave the two uh, co-pilots uh, uh, on their own uh, in these kind of scenarios so design your process design your equipment uh, design your uh, uh, design your uh, what to say uh, work process procedures etc thinking that what could go wrong and how can you minimize that communication could have well would have been better between the two the right side pilot who was inexperienced could have just said i think i'm actually pulling this but you know what he was under pressure at that time personal factors right so they, that that could have been uh, another thing too and and orientation training so there are so many things we could that could have gone better in that particular incident but hey as we as we talked about that human errors do happen and that's where our process of planning and identifying early will help so design and communication are the most important uh, risk 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 factors and proper design and communication ensures that mistakes by humans doesn't turn into accidents so make sure that pro design and communication are looked at uh, regularly and make sure and, and ensure that uh, that doesn't uh, turn into accident I, I just saw in the chat that the captain would have uh, uh, should have regained the cockpit due to severe incline of the aircraft. Exactly, responsibility, right? It's it's management is one more uh, factor that we look into. So uh, they, he should have taken that. So how to identify and plan? So whenever there is a human and you want to identify human error, we we uh, there is something called as human factors analysis. And I prefer, and if you get a chance to read further into this, please look at this. Uh, it's called human factors analysis and classification system. It's normally used by defense of uh, Department of Defense in US. They came up with this and uh, they have derived a system safety model that affects uh, the gap that we talked about between human error and the practice of human error uh, analysis. It looks at four major areas. It looks at what are those organizational influences that caused this leak. So the gaps here you see, this is called a Swiss cheese model of uh, safety hazards. Uh, so the more gaps, the holes you see, that means there are more gaps in the processes. So it looks at what are the four major areas and see, I try to identify the gaps, whether there are any organizational influences, like for example, training, orientation, uh, proper processes, design, et cetera. Were there any unsafe supervision uh, because of like responsibility of the pilot, as we talked about, what are those conditions that that cause these things? Were there any preconditions for unsafe acts? Yes, there were preconditions like, uh, like uh, what do you say? Uh, the design was not properly done, and the design changes between Airbus and Boeing uh, led to that precondition. The precondition was that the 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 
the co-pilot, one of the co-pilot was not very experienced. So there are a lot of pre uh, conditions that also affect uh, for an unsafe uh, acts. And of course, there are some act, unsafe acts itself, un active failures. For example, the co-pilot pulling the, the shift, uh, the, the, the joystick or the, the, the fly stick back uh, without telling the other co-pilot. So there are some unsafe un, uh, acts that can also happen that leads to mishap. So human factors looks into, especially the human factors analysis and classification system looks at these four areas and try to identify how we can minimize them. So I, I have the next few slides as a brief, just to uh, get an idea of how, what are the areas that they focus on. Uh, so human factors analysis uh, looks at organizational factors, supervision, precondition, and acts. So what are those organizational factors that they look into? They look at resources. What are the policies? Whether they have proper financial resources. So when you're planning your, your schedule, when you're planning your work design, your process, et cetera, look into those things. What are your policies? Do you have proper program at place? Who are the people who are actually leading those programs? Do you have enough financial resources to buy all the safety equipment that is required or not? So plan out in those kind of, uh, those kind of things. What are your organizational values and culture? Sometimes it's like, ah, these things happen, so we, we are okay with that. Versus, no, these things, we are very much, in uh, safety is, is one of the most important thing that uh, we, we want to take, uh, we want to uh, keep an eye on. So we will make sure that safety is priority for us. What is the culture of your, your organization says that? What is the chain of command? Who should they go to if something goes wrong? So human factors looks into those things. And also workload, time pressure, fatigue was a very important human factor. So what is the workload of this particular uh, uh, time period or, or, or your uh, activity? Who is monitoring, et cetera? So these are the things that human factors looks into. Human factors also looks into supervision. And under supervision, there could be various reasons why supervision could uh, improper supervision may lead to accidents. For example, it could be because of inad inadequate supervision, maybe because of uh, in uh, what is it, the leadership wasn't uh, capable enough, like the, the pilot not taking the responsibility when he has to. Maybe there was lack of feedback to the supervisor. Maybe the two pilots should have immediately called for the pilot and say, hey, can you come and check on this? I think something is going wrong. Please take over. Or it could be planned and un inappropriate operations could be. So the pilot shouldn't have kept those two pilot, co-pilots on the seats and he himself going and, and taking uh, rest. Or maybe there was a lack of risk assessment done uh, that you know the design was a failure, whether um, uh, the experience was there or not. So there was a lack of uh, inappropriate or planned operations. And failure to correct uh, a known problem. If there were deficiencies in equipment, for example, uh, uh, Air, uh, Airbus design, or if the latest one, Boeing 737 MAX 8, there were uh, deficiency ide identified prior to the accidents of uh, uh, um, even Boeing MAX 7, uh, 737 MAXs a few years ago. But those deficiencies were uh, not corrected even when it was known. And that, that's because of lack of leadership, lack of supervision, lack of authority, etc. And sometimes there could be willful disregard to rules. Sometimes supervisors or, 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 or managers sometimes disregard rules too. So they're like, oh, no problem. I've been doing it for 10 years. This is how we do, do it. This is how we're going to do it. So it may be very, uh, because of uh, those kind of uh, attitudes may also lead to failure. So, so uh, human factors also looks at preconditions, very important. So what are those environmental kind of factors? Like it could be physical environment, temperature changes, rain, cold, those kind of factors would also affect it. Or it could be technological environment leading to the design of the, of the work or, the, or the, the equipment that you're dealing with. Or it could be condition of the, uh, uh, some of the preconditions could be the condition of the individuals too, like cognitive factors. Like were they inattentive when they were attending the training course? Uh, whether there was a negative transfer of information, uh, whether there were distraction during the course that they missed that one crucial important uh, suggestion that uh, the, the the trainer has given, and maybe he forgot that at the right moment. So those could be some of the uh, preconditions. There could be some preconditions like pre-existing personality disorders or, or emotional states could be different. There are many uh, uh, accidents that they have found out that where, where, there, there was overconfidence or complacency was also a factor because of uh, the individuals thought that this is how it is done or, or they were either overconfident or they were complacent in reviewing the processes again. So that could also lead to accidents. 
There could be uh, physiological stress like uh, pre-existing physical illnesses, fatigue. And we talked about that a lot uh, in other uh, sessions too. Fatigue can also be uh, a factor. Uh, learning and ab uh, learning ability and rate. Look at your uh, workers in your in your team and say whether everybody is able to learn at the same capacity, or whether they are able to recall them properly, or whether they were they are going to understand the information provided. Right. So there are different factors that you should look into uh, when you design your your process or your 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 work. And. Uh, Oh, yeah, so those are the uh, preconditions you should look at. And the least, uh, last but not the least, is uh, what are the acts that actually leads to these uh, accidents? So there are errors that can happen, skill-based, judgment. It could be misperception. Oh, I thought that when I move this stick, your, the side of your stick also moves, you know, the misperception, misunderstanding. Or it could be skill-based, uh, people not understanding uh, not properly trained, the co-pilot being uh, an inexperienced pilot, right? So errors can happen uh, because of that too. Or it could be violations. Now, these are not errors, but they are. these are called violations. Violations could be deliberate, disregard for rules or lack of discipline, right? So it's very important to identify where situations may happen, where some people may disregard for rules. People need to wear speed belts. Well, People are not still wearing speed belt probably. People uh, are told not to use cell phones uh, in hand uh, and handheld mo mobile devices while driving. But people disregard for rules and still they do that. And what happens with that? That can lead to, those are the acts that can lead to human errors. So one thing uh, uh, before I, I end, uh, recap all of this is human factors analysis helps you to identify what areas you need to concentrate, but at the same time, it helps you to be proactive. So instead of happening, uh, instead of an incident happening, and then you're identifying, oh, these are the factors that led to the, uh, the errors, be proactive. The chart that I showed previously already tells you what all factors you need to think about before you plan your work schedule or your shoot or your stunt, etc. So be proactive and, and identify and place systems and identify if there are going to be any gaps. And all these will help out in modulating the risk. And if you remember the risk modulators, they are design, communication, training, uh, orientation, recall, uh, memory, etc. So use those risk modulators to minimize the gaps in the, in the systems. And of course, review regularly and see if people are still remembering those uh, procedures, et cetera. And, and overall, this will help out in reducing errors. Errors are inevitable. Errors can happen anywhere. Errors can happen with, the slips, and, with slips and trips, right? Because you're, you told them not to walk there, they will still walk there. There, there are chances that people will still walk there and slip and, and claim that you know uh, they were not told about that, et cetera. So always look at what can lead to this accident or what may lead to this accident. You have a communication, you have a proper orientation uh, sheet. Make sure that you think about what are factors can, can affect that. Is the communication proper? Is it clear? Is it concise? Is it specific? So look at all those factors and then design your communication accordingly so that it can reduce errors. Always remember, planning is very important with all these things. Plan A, plan B. If you, if you think that may not work, always have plan C. And don't worry, if plan A didn't work, the alphabet has 24, 25 more letters. So come up with all alternatives so that you can say how to minimize the, the, the errors. And, and, and then don't blame the human who is sitting there out there because of not because of what he is, but look at what factors that led to him or her uh, to those errors and identify those factors and support the, the human and, and then uh, support the human or the worker that we have uh, that will help them in to mitigate these human errors. So that was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I wanted to make sure that I have some uh, time left at the end for questions. At the same time, please shoot me an email or connect me on LinkedIn for any questions that may come up later. Uh, but I would uh, encourage you to uh, check it out, the human factors analysis and classification systems. Again, uh, check out the Air France uh, videos. Check out Lake Lac Megantic uh, video. Check out Chernobyl nuclear plant. Uh, accident, why that happened uh, because of human errors. Uh, and then you will understand how you can minimize errors in different places. And then you can understand how incidents like rust shooting incident or Deadpool 2 incident could have been prevented uh, beforehand by identifying the processes that people may lead to human errors and hence accidents. 
So thank you very much. And uh, I'm open for question and answers. Or if you have anything, in, uh, please do ask in the questions and answer, uh, answer uh, side of the things or even in the chat. Uh, I'm open for now. Thank you. Anand, any, any, anything from your point, your end? Well, you're on mute. That's a human error. <laughs> in my stupid Even after... microphone. Sale? Yeah, Design sorry. of the microphone doesn't help you out. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you identify there could be prone for human error. <laughs> no, that's just all human error. It's not, it's not, it's just me. I mean, it's been three years and I keep, or two years, and I keep forgetting to, to unmute the actual button on the microphone. Um, just looking at the chat, and I don't see anything coming up in the Q&A yet, but um, I, want, I want to take this opportunity um, to thank you for, for this. And I know we over the past, well, it was I guess it's been three years, that you were the executive director and CEO at AxSafe. We talked about this uh, a lot, uh, and we were always planning on doing a session for the staff and, and um, everybody at AxSafe. Uh, on this and we never really got around to it so this you know is, is I'm happy to have finally seen be given be given and a little bit of an education on the whole human factor side of things and it's very fascinating I, I find it fascinating and I, I'm yeah it does motivate me to learn more about the subject and I'll definitely definitely poke you for some advice as we move forward. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, always here, uh, open. Again, remember human errors are inevitable, right? So no matter how much we try to mitigate them or minimize uh, or try to prevent them, they will still happen. So we'll try our best to minimize them <laughs> and, Maybe we'll... And, and minimize their effect on uh, affecting on a safety critical situation. <laughs> Maybe we'll just all get rid of our brains. Would, uh -huh. You know, no human errors, <laughs> no brains, right? Yeah, that's a downside, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's kind of hard to live without one, I suppose. But there are a few out there, I think, that, that seem to carry on. <laughs> Anywho, um, well, if uh, if there are no no questions, no other things in the chat, maybe we give people an extra five minutes um, on the break. Oh, something just popped up in the chat. No, it's just Nicole saying thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, I, I said Nicole gets a prize for the for, for guessing. Nicole <laughs> always gets prizes, man. <laughs> for the cup, for, for the coffee cup. But uh, I hope Axe. Hey, Nicole, we got we got a we got a vest here for you or something like just like the Axe vest. There you go. Yes, but there you, go. you already got one of those, don't you? <laughs> I'll bring it next time we go for lunch. <laughs> and make sure when you when you all go for coffee the next time, make sure you read the the, the steps. <laughs> right, so we don't end up with a handful of coffee. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Manu. And I also want to thank again um, our sponsor for this session, which was UBCP Actra, a longtime supporter of AxSafe and everything we do. And, and at the conference uh, over the past couple of years, it's been no different. So thank you to the folks at UBCP Actra for, for their sponsorship of this session. Um, one more session left today. And then it's, uh, it's bingo time. So yeah, 345 bingo. Uh, you have a chance to win some Fabulous prizes, uh, Samsung tablets, a ginormous television from Samsung, uh, AirPods, Apple Watch, all sorts of fun stuff, as well as the camaraderie of playing bingo. So there you go. Join us at 345 for that. But before you do that, make it flame. Next up, we're, uh, we're going to talk about propane safety or propane appliances and, uh, and safety and such well, with a fabulous panel of well-respected industry professionals um in enlightening us on the regulations and uh what we need to do to be compliant so that's a, that's about 30 minutes away um stretch time go dewater yourselves rewater yourselves come back stage fab thank you very much for sponsoring our 30 minute coffee break we are done here we'll see you in 30 minutes